This is music from Ukraine. Let's check in with Joseph Lindsley. Joe, what are we listening to here? Before we continue, we invite you to follow our channel, the only American show reporting live from Ukraine every day. Hey, Bob, good afternoon from Kiev. Uh, this is a Ukrainian musician named Ina. Uh, she's playing this famous Ukrainian instrument called the bandura, which I think it has some 64 strings. Uh, a few weeks ago, when I talked to you about the Ukrainian soldier musicians who are traveling uh, the United States, uh, including they stopped at my parents' house in North Carolina, uh, they were, one of them was playing the same instrument. It's really sacred to Ukrainian identity, the bandura. And last night, I went to a little concert here in Kiev. Uh, you know, a, a wartime concert in an attic in an in a old building, maybe a 300-year-old building uh, in Kiev. And uh, the people gathered. There were civilians and soldiers and many people I know. And, you know, you know, everyone's gone through different types of difficulties in this war. And it was such a calm moment to listen to Ina play that, that lovely and powerful instrument, uh, the bandura. And here she's singing a Ukrainian song. Uh, really, I think it was made in the 1960s. So not an ancient folk song called Chervona Ruta. And uh, it's a very popular mel melody uh, known throughout this country. And, you know, I wanted to, in some sense, try to bring you all to, uh, to that concert last night. There was several musicians. There was a, a trio of girls that got up and sang some folk songs, you know, hauntingly beautiful. Uh, and then they had a stand-up comedian. And I think a lot of people, and I remember thinking about this, the first time I heard about stand-up comedy uh, in Ukraine, I said, well, how can you do that in a wartime? Uh, but, you know, now after two and a half years here, you realize you, you have to laugh. Uh, you got to find the, the humor. And uh, at the uh, at the end of the event, the stand-up comic led an auction of different items uh, to support the military. And there were some fancy things like a weekend getaway in that beautiful city of Lviv, uh, some T-shirt from President Zelensky, and you know each of those raised several hundred dollars. And the last item was a basket of apples and jam from the girl we just heard singing, from mm. Ina's grandmother. Mm. And her grandmother couldn't be there, but she sent this basket. And all of a sudden you realize that the bids for the basket of apples and jam were way over the bid of, to the luxury getaway weekend in Lviv, at like a five-star hotel. And the people just wanted to, to support that idea of the grandma sending her apples to benefit the military. And so <laughs> the ba all of a sudden the bids got up to like 13,000 hryvna, which is several hundred dollars. Uh, for these baskets of apples, only more expensive apples would be those fancy Japanese ones. Uh, and uh, and then they, they realized the potential to raise money uh, from these goods. So the guy who uh, uh, the, who purchased the basket, uh, he's a well-known Ukrainian uh, sort of MMA, mixed martial arts trainer, Artem. He offered a jar of this uh, jam from the basket up for an additional auction. And that single jar of jam from the grandmother got even more money than the whole basket of apples. Hmm. And, and it was this real beautiful moment of saying, you know, how much people in this very innocent uh, and collegial way, you know, really want to do everything they can to support each other and to work for victory. And then Ina, the bandurist uh, and, and singer, she called her grandmother uh, back in the village uh, on speakerphone. And, and she told her grandmother, hey, you know, you, know how much, uh, you know how much money we got for the military from your basket of garden apples. And, uh, you know, that was the biggest... Uh, the biggest, uh, uh, you know, bid at the, at the auction. And it was really a lovely and powerful moment of, you know, I think uh, Washington and around the world of, for Ukraine and what does it mean? You know, it is, as I see it every day, it's a story of regular people who just, they want to be free, they want to win, they don't want to live under tyranny. And uh, even if they're going to spend hundreds of dollars on apples to prove that, uh, they do that every single day. Such a lovely story, and we don't uh, get those stories uh, anywhere else. Uh, we appreciate you bringing those to us, uh, Joseph. I, I've been hearing about um, uh, Ukraine actually uh, conducting spot checks of men at uh, concerts and in nightlife spots as they widen uh, the dragnet in the search for troops to shore up uh, the front lines uh, because uh, they've really got a problem there. The troop ranks are down. Uh, what are you hearing about that, Joseph? Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing it. I see this. I mean, you know, in the past month, this has become one of probably the most controversial topic here. Uh, there were some big roundups at popular concerts in Kiev and in Lviv. Uh, even uh, there was an American told me that the uh, military and police officers went to every room in his hotel uh, knocking on the doors. And the hotel, I think I told you the story a few weeks ago, but the hotel staff 
called everyone and said, don't open the doors. They're not allowed to do this. And it's a big point of contention. Uh, you know, I mean, in one sense, they have to boost the numbers in the military. Uh, but there's a lot of concern about, you know, are they using manpower efficiently? And I know this from many people with whom I speak. You know, you have people who are, before the big war, were brilliant uh, in IT or great engineers. And they just get sent, uh, you know, in, in, a, in, in not in a thoughtful way uh, into the front lines. And even people I know well, I've heard the stories of how they've died uh, in battle. Um, uh, heroes of the Maidan Revolution. Like the people who would, you know, who were the top corrupt corruption fighters uh, in Ukraine are uh, getting sent to the slaughter uh, and, and not necessarily having their talents used in a good way. But, and include, this was a big topic last night at that concert, which is in a relatively hidden place. Uh, but everyone, you know, I mean, there were, there were soldiers there too. And I think uh, what I'm hearing though, that there are, you know, there's a lot of people, including some people in the parliament working to reform the system, you know, after two and a half years to make it more intelligent, to help people you know, join the military in a way that they can use their skills and based on what they think they can achieve. Uh, so this is happening. I mean, this is, you know, it's a, you know, I think many countries would have had, had these roundups two years ago, you know, facing an enemy like Russia. Uh, but now Ukraine is facing. Oops, lost the connection with Joseph. Uh, he mentioned yesterday that, and often this happens right when he's about to go on with us, coincidence or Russian interference. Who knows? But as he told us yesterday, uh, many times he has no problem uh, getting through to us. And then as soon as we get on the air, he has issues as he has today. Well, I hope he wasn't recruited for the Army. We'll uh, check in with him tomorrow and uh, we'll, we'll find out uh, and uh, pass along to you a uh, word about uh, what happened today. Thank you for introducing Ukraine on your social media pages. That's very important that much more people can get more information about the situation here and how everybody can help Ukraine to stay stronger and to save all the world. Значит, и сторонний. Ебать.